Working in customer support is never easy. Working in tech support? I can't even imagine. Welcome to this episode of Tales from Tech Support. Our first tale is from Why Later. Just had a surreal ticket. Dude put in a ticket about wanting to type different things at the same time on two different screens. As expected, the issue was that he had two monitors that were on duplicate instead of extend. I asked, Oh, so right now the same thing is on both screens, but you want to be able to have different things on each screen, right? And the confused guy was like, No, I can have different things on the screen. I want to be able to type on both. Does that make sense? Let me see if we're talking about the same thing. Sets to extend. Okay, now I can move this window between screens. Is that what you're looking for? Okay, so I can have my emails on one screen and my music on the other? How do I get it from one screen to the other? Oh, well that's easy. It explains how to drag windows and maximize to boot. Okay, nice, nice. So where do I know where my letters are going when I type? Well, that's easy. It explains text cursor, carrot placement by clicking, demonstrates. Oh, wow, okay, yes, that's exactly what I was looking for. So, I don't need two keyboards for the two different screens? You sure don't. This guy looks, I could see his team's profile pic, and sounds around my age, probably mid-30s, and was missing the absolute bare basics of navigating Windows. He was very polite though, so I reveled in the rare opportunity to show someone the ropes of Windows of all things. Happy Tuesday. I would say in this day and age, it's really weird to know that there's some people that just absolutely do not know how to use a computer, especially ones that grew up with them. But there are also people who probably don't use a whole lot of tech because they just don't like it or choose not to. This might be one of those cases. This next tale is by Incog473. In comes an email from the CEO of one of our clients saying that she is receiving a pop-up which she finds unprofessional and annoying. Said pop-up is a notification from our RMM system prompting user to reboot PC to complete installation of patches we push out on scheduled basis. I respond back letting her know what it's about and that I will change the frequency so that it happens once a month, but she will need to reboot so it can complete updates installation and get rid of the pop-up. One week later, today, she sent another email about a pop-up being unprofessional and annoying, along with a picture of the notification. I again respond that she needs to restart her PC for installation to complete and for the notification to disappear. Ten minutes later, she responds she rebooted, but the notification is still present. I log to our RMM and check our PC uptime. 99 days, 4 hours, and still going. I decide to call her out on her BS, so I take a screenshot of the uptime and attach it to my email response, letting her know that her PC was never restarted. Haven't heard back from her since. What does she think if she restarts her computer that everything she has is going to disappear? That it's going to be like a brand new computer when it restarts? I, I just, I don't understand some of these people, especially if the notification is saying restart your system. Just do what the fuck it says. Our next tale is from Flying Ember Casey. I work in third tier support. I mainly handle mobile device management and IAM tasks, but I also do advanced desktop troubleshooting. If a problem gets big or is extra important, our side desk support hands over the issue to the team I'm on. In January 2019, I was handed a super special problem that dominated my next 45 days. Microsoft Word was flashing. Worse, it would often crash at the end and there was no document recovery available. Trust me, we looked. This problem was causing people to lose work. This meant big money was being lost. The symptoms was the user was just normally using Word and all of a sudden the document would blink. No, not Windows. Not the entirety of the Word application. Just the document portion itself. I first saw the problem on a video and couldn't deny what was happening. Sometimes it would flash only once, but sometimes the whole document would continue to flash on its own. 
There was no interaction with the PC, and it's sitting there continuing to flash. It was like the document is being used by a DJ as part of a show as a flashing light effect. At that point, word was gone. You had to crash it. At this point, what we knew is it would start to flash in response to doing something. We knew nothing. We had a hunch it was caused by one of our word add-ins. We have a number needed for business and compliance reasons, but we ran down patching, drivers, our Windows build, everything. I opened tickets with every vendor. We talked about their product. We talked about drivers and hardware build differences with our hardware vendor. We even went so far as to ship hardware with our custom build to one vendor. We brought in an expert from Microsoft into the office to work alongside us. For weeks, we couldn't figure out how to repeat the problem, so we couldn't figure out if certain changes would fix it. We confirmed it wouldn't happen every day for every user. Someone might never have the problem happen again. Then at one point, we got a hold of a laptop with the issue happening over and over. We gave them a new laptop and used this access to finally identify how to repeat the issue on any computer. To recreate the problem on demand, I would make this insanely complex 1000 page document with hundreds of formatting changes. Then I would do what I could only describe as being like a 3 year old. I would violently scroll up and down in the document until it would start to flash. I would change to a second document of similar complexity and scroll it in the same way. I would change to a third one, and so on. I would watch Word's memory jump as I did this sequence. I could usually count on the flashing beginning when it reached an approximate point. By this time, we had limited the problem to Windows, drivers, or one specific add-in that had to be on the PC for the problem to happen. Approximately one month in, we finally identified the actual problem. We needed to have hardware acceleration on in office. We had disabled it. We identified the specific add-in vendor that had recommended it be turned off. They couldn't explain why it needed to be off beyond vague reasoning that it fixed some problem they couldn't give the exact details on. Proving that sometimes your entire problem comes down to that one checkbox. It's kind of anticlimactic, but if you work in IT, you've been there. What I'm taking away from this is that it's the app vendor and their app that's the actual problem, that they have an issue in their app that they either can't fix or just don't want to fix and are using the cheap band-aid option. I'm glad you were persistent though and actually figured out what the real cause was. And our final tale is by Nige21202. I work at MSP, doing the usual tech support for all kinds of different business customers. Today we had a new one call in. He has a problem with an old software that won't start anymore. A software we don't offer nor officially support. I ask for his contact details, phone number, email, and so on. To try to help the person, I remote it into the laptop and let the user show me the issue. It was a software from 2012. He told me he had talked to the software provider and couldn't get support for it anymore, and apparently they aren't able to transfer the database. So I tried my best to understand what was going wrong with the software and maybe fix it. Since it had been about 45 minutes already, I figured it wasn't worth to keep trying and told them that I would talk to software support and asked if he had a number to call them. So he opened up an email that was sent to him by a salesperson with a number at the bottom. I read through the email and they already sent him three official resellers for their new software, but didn't say anything about not being able to transfer the data. Just gave them a call and they confirmed that there was no update available. So I called the user back and told them to go with one of the resellers in the email. Then I remembered that I didn't ask for a street address. Called him again asking for it. He then asked why we needed it. I told him that there's some paperwork that comes with calling for the first time. He asked if we would send an invoice for that. I told him that we do. But you didn't even solve the problem! Nope, I didn't, I said a bit confused. You called for help with the software you bought from someone else. I helped you as best as I could and came to the conclusion that this is nothing we can solve in a reasonable time. 
would you please provide me the address please? He didn't, and kept insisting on not getting an invoice. So I transferred him to my boss. I told my boss what happened. This took one minute to one and a half minutes. In this time, the call from the customer disconnected. We came to the conclusion that he won't give us the address, and we will talk about it with my boss's boss. But since he had already given us his name, company name, and phone number, I looked it up on Google, and what came back was an address and another phone number. No website though. I think we were not the only people he doesn't want to pay. I figured I would try to give the number a call, so I turned my caller ID off and called the number. You could clearly hear that somebody picked up, but said nothing. I asked if I was talking to user and just got a quick, no, back. The voice suspiciously sounded like the one from the person I talked to before, so I also asked about the address, to which I got a, no, from the user. Both no's sounded more like a very panic, oh fuck, oh fuck, so it obviously was the person who called. I just said that we will send the invoice and everything, but just got nothing back. Told him to have a good day and hung up the phone. Don't try to outsmart people who get paid to solve problems 8 hours a day, or rather, don't be a problem for them. You have to love this, they, they called you, trying to get help, you helped them even though it was something that wasn't even related to you, and they don't want to get the invoice because you provided a service. The fact that they go to such extremes to avoid trying to pay people just says this is probably something they do regularly and that's sad. Alright, that's enough Tales for the day. Well that wraps up this episode of Tales from Tech Support. If you liked the video, please drop a like, share my content on all of your social media, subscribe if you haven't already, and make sure to hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload, and drop a comment down below. It really helps with the algorithm and helps new people find my channel. Thanks for watching, thanks to my patrons, have a great day and stay safe out there.